America's pop culture answer to a profound need that other societies meet, perhaps in a richer and more traditional way. The Tibetans have their Book of the Dead, which instructs them in calm preparation for death as a glorious part of life. In West Africa, people spend years planning their own funerals. In Mexico, there's the Day of the Dead, a party to share life's joyous moments with the departed. Yet in America, we face death as though it were trench warfare, spending most of our health care dollars on the last months of life, hooked to tubes in intensive care units. I was observing, I was feeling... No wonder hundreds of people turn up at the monthly meetings of IANS, the International Association of Near-Death Studies. The communication that you had with your grandmother, who was... They're hoping you. for a way to make it easier to let go. An open-hearted listener... Kimberly Clark Sharp is president of the Seattle IANS group. People are very interested now. I'm the life of a party. What do you do? Oh, I'm an expert in near-death experiences. Wham! I've got everybody's attention. And it's the absolute reverse of how it used to be. In an age of technology, have we become starved for connections to each other and to God? Most people die in hospitals. Most people are unaware they're completely unaware of what it's like to die and so of course they're unaware that the process of dying is very joyous and spiritual floating around and just happening. this is information that people are now craving Were you gone for just a minute that's why I'm saying that near-death experiences are a cultural icebreaker I wanted to stay in the light to hear them is to believe in mankind's most ecstatic hope an eternal life of light and love, a hope that science seems determined to crush. No lesions in the brain, but we still need to know where the central fissure is, so we'll have to go. When we come back, some startling medical experiments to try to confirm the near-death experience and why some scientists think they now have physical proof that this mystery of the spirit is in fact just the misfiring of a million neurons. Turning Point, Life After Death, Personal Experiences, will continue in a moment. One doubts that the witnesses of the near-death experience believe what they say, that they have somehow seen a glimpse of a spiritual comfort from beyond. It's just that most scientists think that comfort comes from nature itself. Is it possible that nature evolved a near-death experience, an NDE? Because the calmer you are in stress, the better chance you'll survive it. Well, see what you think as we take you to the front lines where the battle over the meaning of the near-death experience is being waged. The next thing I remember is being in the room but above my bed, looking down, not looking up. I had the greatest vantage point. I felt very much more free. You're just floating on air. You're, you're, you're kind of floating and you're just kind of floating and everything's peaceful and you do see other people. Madeline Lawrence, PhD and Director of Nursing Education. Describe a little bit more, like the form, did they have clothes, what age, the, sex, um, could you tell any of that? No, I really couldn't because... Could she be the first like person to prove the existence of a human soul? It was like seeing a ghost, if you will, which everybody had kind of like veils, like Mary, if you will. I know it sounds corny, but just had like veils. She is one of the new breed of scientifically trained near-death detectives. How are you? Good, good. Listen, I'm, still, I'm trying to find patients for my study for the unconscious patients. Here at Hartford Hospital, she is taking notes from nearly every so patient who becomes right, unconscious. Okay. As though I was suspended. Okay. Did See, you feel I'm like... Gonna, I'm going to travel. Oh, all right. So you felt like you were going to be moving? Yes. Is there evidence here in the hospital's electrophysiology lab where cardiac tests are performed? Sometimes when people with diseased hearts undergo routine diagnostic testing here, their hearts stop and need to be restarted. 
It is here Lawrence reasons someone might have a near-death experience. Are you having discomfort? Betty Harrigal, age 66, needed these diagnostic tests on her diseased heart. Well, a certain percentage of the patients will become unconscious. And what we're interested in is what happens to them when they're unconscious. Betty, I want you to count for me, okay? Okay. Count for me. Start at one. Betty? Okay. Betty? She's out. She's out. 200. 200. Go ahead. 200. All right, off. Betty? I'm, I don't have anything here. Betty. I don't have anything. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go, Betty. It's okay, Betty. 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 Betty's Betty. heart stopped for 23 seconds. It's okay. You passed out. Later, Betty remembers nothing. But Lawrence's preliminary data indicate that about 23% of the patients who become unconscious do have some of those paranormal near-death experiences. Some of them will report having out-of-body experiences. Some of the um, patients have reported hearing when it was when the doctors and the nurses weren't aware that they could hear. Do you think they really have out-of-body experiences? Certainly their perception is that they're out of their bodies. Um, <clears throat> whether in fact they are, well, that's one of the things that we're trying to establish. How? Well, we do have some signs in the room that are only visible to people if they in fact are out of their bodies and that um in here yes it's on top of this um, cabinet right here oh, right up there yes now you can see the way it's tilted that you can't read the message no. from just standing on the on the floor so you'd have to you know either get up on a chair or be out of your body nope still can't see it and what does it say do you know yes Th this one it says the popsicles are in bloom it's a nonsense message that Madeline Lawrence changes often, hoping someone will come back and say it and challenge all of established science. Lawrence originally worked with America's foremost near-death researcher, psychologist Kenneth Ring. He devised precise measures for each part of the near-death experience. I think that some aspect of our consciousness survives the death of the physical body, but what that experience is like, whether it is whether the near-death experience is the doorway into the house of death or whether there's nothing more than that doorway, I can't say for sure as a scientist, but from my studies of these individuals, I think it's almost impossible not to believe that some aspect of ourselves doesn't die when our body does. Halfway across the world in Holland, a cardiologist named Willem van Lommel has spent six years looking for the same proof. There's, in my opinion, no clear explanation, physiologically or by drugs. You can say, oh, that's, oh, that's how it goes. I don't know. Having a medical education, I cannot explain it. In one of the most extensive medical investigations ever of the near-death experience, he's compiled interviews from almost every case of unconsciousness in 12 Dutch hospitals. The story of a girl five years old who nearly drowned. And when she came by, she said, it, uh, it was no, no problem. I had my brother there. And uh, she had a brother, but her parents never told her because he died before she was born. So there are things you cannot explain by uh, physiological reaction. It's the same story we heard from Vi Horton of Augusta, Georgia, the one who said she saw her sisters during an out-of-body, near-death experience. She also says she met an infant standing in the light, a brother she never knew she had. The baby said, I'm your baby brother. Look me over. This is the way I was. And you can tell our father, and he will verify that you had a brother. And I only knew of the two sisters. And when I looked him over and I came back, my father was living. He lived until 83 and died at the age of 97. He says, my God, you must have died and gone to heaven because no, no one knew about the baby. Now, there's no one living that knew it but me. I've heard lots and lots of stories of paranormal claims, people seeing things at a distance that they shouldn't see. Now, if those claims are true, then, then my idea about NDs is wrong. So, of course, I want to find out whether they're true. Consciousness. What on earth is consciousness? Susan Blackmore, a professor of psychology in England. 
what consciousness is about. She's another of the world's leading authorities on the near-death experience, but she doesn't buy it. I've never found any that have convinced me. I've tried to look into many of them. I've tried to speak to relatives. I've talked to doctors and never found any convincing evidence. And we tried to document some of them, too. To talk to Vi Horton's father, but as she said, he's been dead for years. And we heard of people who had seen objects physically impossible to see unless they were out of body. But in every case, we couldn't find the person or the proof of what happened. But I think what's happening is that people are trying to validate their experience by making these paranormal claims. But you don't need to do that. They're valid experiences in themselves, only they're happening in the, in the brain and not in the world out there. In other words, a kind of movie our brains run at times of extreme traumatic stress. Like this movie. An ordinary farm girl has an almost fatal concussion. Floats above the earth. What? I definitely felt it. It was like out of body experience. I don't know. What? I could, I could see you, you know, looking at me, but it was like I was looking from behind me or something. An out of body experience and more. It felt like I was inside, like inside my mind, looking out through the eyes, you know, like two little holes that, you know, two little portholes or something that I was looking at. Seeing through portholes, tunnel vision. Sound familiar? If God were handing out glimpses of the afterlife, could it be reproduced with wire, a doctor, and some electrical current? That was a surprising finding. So I think that may address some of the questions of what brain regions may be involved uh, in these kinds of phenomena and um, what the mechanisms are. Still, believers are not daunted. They say these experiments can't account for feelings of love or belief in God. Here is a table. In other words, think of the brain as a radio. Science has found the equipment, but not the message being sent. I think we're left to wonder, and I think that's fine. I think we should wonder. I think it would be too bad if we could either say for sure it, re it shows life after death or for sure it's just a neurological artifact. I know that there are certain regions in the brain that can be stimulated if you get a so-called near-death experience-like uh, event. David Beckman says he searched for scientific answers after his rafting accident. He wanted to find a physical explanation for his experience, but he keeps coming back to the same conclusion. Because I didn't want to come off as some sort of half-cocked, new-age person. It took me a long time and a lot of reflection to actually come to the point where I didn't feel there was any other explanation for me than that this was a valid experience that I'd had. Ask most near-death experiencers about neurons, temporal lobes, drugs. They'll say the same thing. You'll not find, I think, a near-death experiencer who's been there who buys that. It's... And it's not a matter of proving or not proving to anyone. That's what they want to believe. That's fine. If that's what they want to believe, they can believe that. Unless it's happened to you, you can't even say, I think I know what it's like. Back in Hartford, Connecticut, Madeline Lawrence has now spent six months searching for proof of the spirit that science will accept. You think it's going to happen? It would be very interesting. You know, it might. I, I really, um, I don't know, quite honestly. A lot of people have tried to do this for a long time, and it takes, so it takes a long time to come up with data that's useful. So far, no one has had a near-death experience in the room where the popsicles are in bloom. You may have heard of another school of thought, that the whole thing is just a reenactment of the birth process by the brain. But scientists and those who've been there say that doesn't account for the whole complex of the near-death experience. For instance, the visions. Did you know Abraham Lincoln was said to have seen a vision of himself in death? General Patton was reported to have seen his dead father. When we come back, a leading near-death researcher believes he can reproduce the visions that accompany NDEs. They're called reunions, first-hand meetings with dead relatives. And I'll try it when Turning Point continues. Turning Point, Life After Death, Personal Experiences, will continue in a moment.